first of all, I want to say thanks. Thanks to the Bender family for pulling this all together. Over many miles, many months, more than a few challenges, but they made this significant event happen today. And I'm grateful to you for making it happen and bringing us together. Uh, my second thanks is to you. There's a saying that you can pretend to care, but you cannot pretend to be there. You're here. You cared enough to show up. And I know that means the world to the Bender family and to our dear friend, Ben. Lastly, I thank God for putting Ben Bender in my life. Some really exciting days because of him. <laughs> but what a, what a treasure he was, and I'm grateful for it. We met 50 years ago. Wow. I was an advisor with the Vietnamese Marines. My new assistant was coming in, and he flew in by helicopter, along with some others, and I asked, how will I know Captain Bender? And they said, you'll have no mistake picking him up. <laughs> and I didn't. He was huge. Huge. The drill instructor who nicknamed him Moose, nicknamed him Will. He was so big, the Vietnamese loved him because they could hide behind him and not get hit. He was just amazing. But then I thought about it. You know, he had to be huge to contain the huge heart that was Ben Bender. He had to be huge. He loved nearly everybody, and called so many of us beautiful people. How many times have we heard that phrase? Not often in my case, but from Ben, it always was. He loved those Vietnamese Marines, and they loved him, I can assure you. We were members of the, uh, our advisors to the Vietnamese Marine Corps. This was Vietnam's General Reserve. This was the outfit that would go to the hot spots anywhere in South Vietnam for the fight. General Reserve, quick reaction, all that was necessary. So 1970, uh, we got the call. We were going up the Mekong River to Cambodia. Cambodia, a sanctuary for the North Vietnamese Army. And as we were going up the Mekong River, it was an amazing experience. Vietnamese Marines were for the first time the invader. They were not the invadee. So there was a sense of pride there, but there was also a sense of resolve as they saw the headless corpses of Vietnamese who had been killed by the NVA. So we had initially some skirmishes, and then we went hunting for them, and we found them, lots of them and surprised them because they had been using Cambodia as a sanctuary. It was what we used to euphemistically call a target-rich environment. There were a whole bunches of them. But the strangest thing was the rules of engagement, when you could fire, when you're not supposed to fire, and so forth, were so restrictive that we could not fire on them until they fired on us. And I, at times I thought I was in a, a surrealistic movie as I'm flying on a command and control helicopter looking down at North Vietnamese Army soldiers in uniform with weapons ready to kill me. And I can't do a thing about it. I was tempted to wave, but I thought that was probably not a good idea. And then finally one of them took a shot at us, and with that, things got interesting. Uh, one company was landed with Ben along with the battalion executive officer, barely got in and then got another company in and that was it, and they were surrounded by a, a superior force. Um, they had to move in a position to control what was gonna take place later. And from 7.30 at night, 19.30, until six o'clock the following morning, under four determined attacks. Ben told me that just before the sun went down, 
his counterpart, the Brazilian XO, turned to him, put out his hand and said, Om Ben, Mr. Ben, we will never see the sun again. But tonight, we're going to kill a lot of North Vietnamese army. Fortunately, only one of those predictions came true. And they survived that night largely because of Ben. Ben <laughs> called in time after time airstrikes, 18 OV-10 sorties, 29 gunship attacks. They survived, and he saved many lives, both Vietnamese, Marines, and civilians because of Ben. Years following, uh, our paths crossed a few times, our families grew, and then God's will again, 2015, when Ben came here, I retired from a position I had up in Virginia to come back to Florida. And so we were together again. And what a joy that was. This time not battling the NBA, but rather battling early bird uh, diners, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get in ahead of us uh, for dinner. But how precious that time with Ben was, either on the phone or coming down to see him, one of the greatest memories I have, and there's some pictures of it, was when Ben and I were invited to a reunion of this OB-10, Navy OB-10 uh, squadron at its reunion. This is an outfit that stood up in Vietnam and shut down in Vietnam and served only in Vietnam. They're having their first reunion, and Ben and I had a chance to go there and to tell them what they had done all those years, all those 49 years or so, no knowledge of what they really had accomplished. They saved our lives. And for us to be able to share that with them, to know that their lives truly had meaning. I said earlier that uh, years ago, a commandant asked uh, General Krulak, Lieutenant General Krulak, give me a few words on why the country needs the Marine Corps. And he came back and said, America doesn't need a Marine Corps. It's got a great army, a great Air Force, great Navy, and so forth. But America wants a Marine Corps for three reasons. The Marine Corps will always be ready. Whatever the issue is, Marines will respond. First to fight is more than just a couple of words in our Marine Sim. Always ready. Secondly, Marines will win the battle. Losing is not a Marine Corps tradition. And when you send in those ready Marines, you know what the outcome is going to be. And then, at the end of the tour, however long it may be, two years or 40 years, the Marine Corps returns to society a man or a woman of character, of integrity, a better person than when in. And they finish by saying, if the Marine Corps ever fails in those three requirements, then America will no, no longer want a Marine Corps. I'll share with you that we saw in Ben those three qualities. He was always ready, always looking for the action, going to where the hot spots were. He was ready to do so. And when Ben went in, there was going to be victory. And when it was over, think of the people that he touched, the mentorship that he provided to so many people. Just amazing. He didn't quit being a leader when he left the Marine Corps. It just kept on. I envy him a number of things, but most especially, Ben died a happy death. I can only think he had a special relationship with St. Joseph, the patron saint of happy deaths. He received the last rites of the Catholic Church. He also received communion again through the behest of a friend of ours died surrounded by his family. It doesn't get any better than that. And it couldn't happen to a more worthy person. So, Ben, I know you're looking down on us now, and, and I hope that we're doing you proud. Well, for those of you who have your angels, Ben probably purchased about 2,000 of these over a period of time, but they hold us all in good stead. And I just ask you uh, to remember how lucky we were, how lucky we are 
we have a person who influenced us so much and loved us so much as we loved him, Ben Bender. God bless you. Thank you.